The trial of amputee runner Oscar Pistorius has been adjourned till Wednesday. Pistorius, who broke down inside the courtroom, could be headed for more trouble after the judge upheld the prosecution's charge of premeditated murder. A police car carrying the defendant, Oscar Pistorius, arrived at the courtroom in Pretoria at 9 in the morning. The trial began as one of the most recognized athletes of the modern era faced murder charges. Prosecutor Gary Nell started by saying Pistorius shot an innocent woman who was unarmed and inside a toilet and he fired four shots and three of which hit Miss Teen Camp through the bathroom door. Nell argued even if Pistorius did think she was a burglar, his shooting her through the bathroom door still constitutes premeditated murder. The defense led by Barry Rue argued that this is not even murder and spoke against the concept of premeditation, suggesting Pistorius did not know it was Teen Camp behind the door. While the argument and counter-arguments continued, Pistorius broke down in the courtroom. The prosecution lawyer though wasn't affected by the falling tears. As he went on to say, Pistorius put on his prosthesis, walked 7 meters and fired 3 shots through a locked bathroom door at girlfriend Riva's teen camp. And it went from bad to worse for the defense counsel as Judge Desmond Nair stated that premeditated murder couldn't be ruled out completely and thus ruled it as a Schedule 6 case of premeditated murder, leaving Pistorius in tears. The court was adjourned till Wednesday morning after Pistorius read out an emotional statement in his defense. Okay, and here is what Pistorius had read out in his statement in front of Magistrate Desmond Nair through his legal counsel. Heard a noise in the bathroom and felt a sense of terror. Got his gun and moved towards the bathroom, screamed at the intruder to get out of the house. In fact, asked Riva Steenkamp to call the police thinking she was still in bed, did not have prosthetic legs on and felt vulnerable. Pistorius also said he fired through the bathroom door and then saw Steenkamp was not in bed. He realized it could have been her in the bathroom instead. He said he went to the balcony and called for help and then put his legs on. He opened the toilet door by smashing it with a cricket bat. Steenkamp was alive inside, slumped over and he called the paramedics. He tried to revive her, but she died in his arms. Meanwhile, Riva Steenkamp, Pistorius' girlfriend, who was shot dead on Valentine's Day, was cremated in a private funeral by her family, hundreds of miles away from Pretoria, where Pistorius was having his bail plea heard. The family took the body of the slain Riva in a black hearse to a crematorium in Port Elizabeth. Mourners at the funeral called for a harsh penalty for Pistorius, who has been charged with murder. A very, very troubling story indeed. All right, and joining us now, Stephen Chuson, Professor of Criminal Law and Procedure at the University of Wits, Joburg via Skype. Uh, Stephen, welcome to CNN IBN. As uh, we speak, uh, Judge Desmond Nair has ruled a Schedule 6 case, not ruling out a premeditated killing. Now, tell us, how is it established in this case? They said this should not be a Schedule 6 offence, it should be a Schedule 5. And the defense tried with evidence to suggest to the court that the proper charge would be a schedule five murder and not schedule six which is a premeditated or planned murder the magistrate heard this argument and made a provisional ruling that he would treat the matter as a schedule six uh, charge and the significance of this is that it is uh, substantially more difficult to obtain bail on this charge because the test is higher. The test is not only is it in the interest of justice that the accused be released, but he now has a burden of proof to show that exceptional circumstances exist which justifies his release. Right, uh, Stephen, is it, uh, is it not per, uh, perhaps necessary to establish an intention as the basis for a killing? For the charge of murder, an essential element of the charge is intention. In, f in two forms is direct intention that the aim and object of the accused was to kill the victim or what we call legal intention where he foresaw that his conduct could kill the victim and he didn't care about that consequence and he proceeded with his actions. Stephen, over the years you've been fine, uh, you know, uh, tracking such cases. Uh, does this personally, does this case really look like one which was pre-planned and executed? I must be honest, in my personal, professional opinion, uh, I would not have pegged this matter as a premeditated murder. In my book, 
premeditated murder would be where you formulate a plan and then take steps to execute that plan to kill somebody. It does not normally cover the love triangle situation or the drunken, violent shooting or a, a, an argument which escalates into violence. And it seems to me that from the evidence we hear from the neighbors that they were screaming and shouting that this was a domestic dispute that escalated, although this is strenuously def uh, denied by the accused and his defense who are alleging uh, a, a, a terrible mistake, that, they, that he thought there was an intruder in his room and he was defending himself. Right. Uh, final word, Stephen. There are no witnesses still now. So what is the circumstantial evidence that weighed in with the judge? The, the circumstantial evidence is, is pretty strong. Uh, while we have only two people in the room, we have only one survivor, and this is the same survivor in his own version has admitted pulling the trigger. He's admitted shooting through the bathroom door at what he says he thought was an intruder. The, I think the, the forensic evidence in the form of blood and marks and other uh, items found uh, on the premises could uh, sh paint a, a very damning picture.